Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. And I'll repeat myself after a little bit, not to worry. But, oh, we got one person waiting. Ooh, I wonder, is that us? I don't Could know. Could be. Anyway. So, yesterday on the live, I mentioned I was going to do another character with the masking fluid. And you guys chose a unicorn. So, I have one drawn. It's ready to go. We're going to play with it today. I don't know if I'm going to get him completely finished up. And one day, we're, we're going to try and find out. Mm, I don't know. But we will see. But first, I thought I would mix up some interference to use in alcohol so I can put... He's a unicorn. He's going to need a little extra sparkle. And I figured with the, the gold interference, that would look really nice. So we're going to be adding him in that in somewhere. I don't know. But um, when I mix mica powders up, I usually put it into a paper cup and then I'll fill up one of these little bottles almost to this, like, I don't know, shoulder point, but just a little bit underneath it. So that way I know I'm dealing with the right amount of alcohol. And I'll put it into one of the paper cups that doesn't have any kind of wax lining. And just to get it to mix up really, really well. But I'll give it like a couple of heaping popsicle sticks worth in there. I like we're dealing with cooking measurements, you know. I'm calling it studio measurements. And then I just pinch the cup and pour it back in the bottle. And it, usually for the most part I can get it in there without making a huge mess, which is amazing for me. And then if you got any left over, you just add a little bit of alcohol and then swish it around and add that to it. So it's not a a really picky way of doing measurements and works out pretty well. That way you get all the mica powders. Okay. I'll put a lid on that. That's ready to go. Anybody in? Mm -hmm. Hi, Janice. Hi, Diane. I have the unicorn ready. <laughs> so I went. Was thinking about doing something. Um, I was thinking about making them a paint. I know usually you see unicorns, and they're solid colors. Either they're white or they're palomino looking. Uh, I have seen some black ones, but I haven't seen a lot of paints, and I was thinking, why not? It'd be a little different and put some spots in it, uh, but I thought now would be a good time to do that. So, what, I, I was going to say, what do you think? But I think I might just go for it. Can you hand me the masking fluid right there? Is that, yeah, light green stuff? So, what I've done, just for anybody watching in later, is I've got a masking fluid. Is that clear? Okay, uh, and the needle applicator that comes with it, I find it clogs up a lot. So I just put it into a uh, needle applicator bottle. What? We're talking about. <laughs> and that's an old one. You see it's actually turning a dark blue at the bottom. And then when I use this stuff, I usually have a paper towel handy just to clean off the tip occasionally because it acts like rubber cement where it dries really quickly. And that way I'm always cleaning off the tip or making sure the tip flows well. So let's see. If I were going to do a spot, I'm going to add one right here. And then... And some there. I wanted to do it early on so it could start to dry while we're hanging out and chatting and stuff. This stuff dries pretty quickly. I want to give it a scratchy look like the rest of the lines have. Just to tie it in. This makes a terrible sound. If 
you don't like scratchy chalkboard sounds. So what this does is it kind of, you can act like a, uh, a wall a little bit. Um, it, because it's not very high, it's not going to keep your alcohol inks or dyes completely out of the area. But it'll help. But it'll definitely, when we get done with it and you start to peel it up, it'll have a, uh, a line to the whole piece. Probably let that dry a little bit more. I don't know if frisket would work. Uh, I guess it's a like a liquid frisket, um, but frisket itself is a thin, you know, that thin sheet that has the um, re easy release glue on the back of it. And I think alcohol ink would definitely flow underneath it. But yeah, liquid frisket might do it. What's frisket? Frisket is meant to mask off an area so that you can airbrush or do any kind of spray type of colorant with it. But, yeah, with something fluid, I mean, pretty much a, a liquid masking fluid. All right, I'm going to move y'all. Give me a sec. Mikey's been messing around with camera work, and he's trying to work on the live system. And we even got a, a laptop that we're messing around with to try to work on the system to make it a little easier for, for everybody and hopefully enjoyable. Let's see. Mind if I move the canvas a little bit? Wait. What? What? You're moving the canvas? Yes. Okay. Just a little bit. How's that was that? way too much. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I had a paint. His name was uh, Sketch. So we recently lost him, but uh, he was with us for a long time. He was, what, like 34, I think? Older than me. Yes, definitely older than you. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Jeannie says, good job, Mikey. All right, are you going to give that stuff a chance to dry? Now, I used some reference materials uh, for my horses. It's just got the one camera on, right? Yes. Okay. Soon I'm going to be adding another camera to the screen so you get to see uh, mom's facial express expressions as she's working. As I goober up and stuff like yes. that? It'll be hilarious. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Any moment you can catch. Okay. So I've done some photography work on the side so that I had some reference materials for doing artwork and such. Um, and these are a couple Frisians that I took some pictures of. And then this was my reference for this guy here. Actually, you know what? There's a lot of him that is cut off. Is there any is way it? to make it taller? Mm. I'm trying. I have okay. to mess with it. Because you almost got like a, let's see, where is the edge here? Yeah, that's almost like a, a hand and a half. Well, we're dealing with horses. A hand and a half is appropriate. Okay, I got the camera here. I'm going to have to do some serious adjustments then. Okay. Give me a sec. You got this. There we go. Anyway, back to the horses. Um, so my mom and I went to a Frisian extravaganza in Utah, I believe. And, oh my gosh, the horses were amazing. And I was in photography wonderland. So I did a ton of photos there. Um, I've even visited some local stables that uh, breed horses and such. Uh, and my policy with them is if they let me take pictures, I only share the good ones. You can make the back long and I might stick it, get it out a little bit more. Or, okay, maybe that was a bad idea. <laughs> we got too many chiefs. We do. Whoops. Unfortunately, if I tighten this, it just... <laughs> it just goes down? Okay. So let it go down so it's stable, and then we'll just do the best we can with it. Is that holding? Maybe. Technical difficulties. We got it. We'll get it. We'll get it there. Julie did some inks using frisket. Frisket film? Really? Julie's quite brave. <laughs> I 
I'll give you that one on the bravery on it. Okay. Right. I'll be doing some more adjustment. Give me a sec. Okay. I'll put you okay, over here, though. Here. So I thought what I would do in the background is I would have grassy areas. Well, we got the whole world in there. Is it moved around? Yes. Oh, you got it over there. Okay. So I thought in the background I would do some grassy areas, um, kind of fog it out a little bit, and then focus it on him so that he's a little bit more of the feature. I thought I would do, I was thinking about the horn, and I would think I was going to do it looking more like a bone with some light gold accents, kind of build up the shimmer, and then touch up a little bit of shimmer on him so it's not so much like a golden horse. It's actually, I don't know, kind of like teeters between that realistic and not so realistic. I hope I'm making sense. I don't know. I haven't done too many of these fantasy unicorns since I was a teenager. <laughs> I used to draw them all the time. Okay. So I've got one of these little pounce pads that I think I'm going to use for the background. Oh, okay. So Julie was saying that she built up the latex stuff and that stuff. <laughs> That's this. So it acts like a jumbo version of the masking fluid. And you can really build up the dam on that one. Oh, damn. Uh, uh, okay, I couldn't help myself. Right. Sorry. Moving you on. Okay. Yeah, you want to go ahead and uh, change the monetization thing and get that going too? I will, I will. Okay. I know I got you pushing, pulling in all different directions. Sorry. Okay. Let me get going here. All right, so we got blues and greens. I've got some lettuce. That would be my greens. And I'm filling up my little pounce pad with color. Kind of an aqua color here. And then I'm gonna add some alcohol to this just to get so it's nice and fluid. Just start moving some color around. All right, I'll be there. Okay, cool, thank you. Let's see, An interference, when you apply interference, pouncy, pouncy, yeah, right? It works great on these little pounce pads. Because it adds just a little bit. See how close can I get? May have to go back and forth between two of them, like a lighter color. I think I'm gonna do that. Let's see. Of course, I get it all over my fingers immediately. Do I have any yellows? Yes, I do. You start messing around with the alcohol dyes and creating colors. I've got so many blooming colors all over the place. It's just, I don't know if it's a funny thing or a sad thing or I don't know. I gotta figure out a way to organize it. That's for sure. Bring in some yellows over here. Just to kind of help it. Uh oh, what's your favorite color, dude? Lime. Yuck. Yuck. <laughs> <laughs>
is a really quick way of getting a bunch of color on there, but also being able to play with where your color is going to go. Let me see, where's my interference again? Here. got to get my nails done and I'm sure the lady is going to give me the side eye look when she looks at my nails. Doing so much color work, it's in the cuticles. And Okay. Getting close to that. Yeah. Okay. Go. All right. I think I'm good. If you're looking for a a vomitosing your time zone, yep. you got one. All right, I'm heading now, y'all. See y'all. He is doing some research into. I don't know if it's OBS or. Yep. Is it OBS yep. that you're messing around with? Yeah, it's a it's a streamer software, so. Hopefully I can set up multiple webcams on it so you'll get two different perspectives and I can make it easy for mom to switch between the two. Should be good. So we'll have that like little picture and a big picture so that when you're looking at the screen, you'll see a little screen. It'll either be one side or the other and we can switch back and forth. What can and you we'll do? Get like donation notifications and maybe you can have the chat on one corner. Awesome chat comments. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Everybody says bye, Monkey. <laughs> Let's see. Lettuce green. Bring some of that in. A little bit more gold interference. I'm already getting a sheen over this piece. From the gold interference. Start bringing in some d deeper greens, I think. Time. Time to do that. Where's that peacock? Here's the peacock. There it is. Yeah, a little bit of Rhonda. Boop. Okay. Good day, Sue! I always get a kick out of it when there's somebody in the chat that is from across the world that never gets old. And in fact, it's probably like, you know, the middle of the night or early in the morning or something like that. And you're still here. Get kind of close to this horn without going over it too much. All right, bring in some greens over here. You can even pounce like really light and just barely deposit it too. And you'll end up with a little bit more of a Kind of a grassy, mossy kind of look to it. All right, I have to be careful. I know I'm close to the camera, so I'll probably come in. Am I too loud? Because I can get loud. Believe me. I've got country mama voice that can project. You know, if they ever have one of those, like, sui competitions, you know, I, I'd probably win. <laughs> or be a finalist, I'll put it that way. Well, Sue, it's not my choice. Actually, everybody picked it. I was asking everybody, you know, should I do a dragon or should I do a horse today? And then it was started leaning towards the horse area and then somebody put in unicorn. 
Um, I kind of want to blame Janice on this. Not sure if it was, but, <laughs> and then everybody was like, yeah, let's do a unicorn. So that's kind of how that happened. Okay, I like where this is going right now. Just do a little bit of light bits here. Whoops, that's just too obviously round. So we're gonna blend that in a little bit. Mm. Blend. There we go. I am doing a combination of alcohol inks and dyes. I could not tell you which one's which. Uh, so let's just say I'm doing them all because <laughs> it's colors and I'm having access to all of it. All right, so we're doing, the y'all who are new to the live, we're doing a paint uh, unicorn. So I used to have a paint, his name was Sketch. He was awesome. And so thinking of him, we're doing a paint. So back to the photos. I wanted to tell you guys the story, see if I can paint and draw and talk at the same time. But that, that could be a challenge. Um, so my mom and I, like I said, we went to the Frisian Extravaganza and I took a ton of pictures there. Well, got to meet a lot of stallions because they would go there and get graded for, you know, I guess it's kind of like confirmation like you would do with dogs and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to find one of these that's not too bad with the colors. Ah, that'll work. And so got to meet a lot of really cool stallions. Well, the, pic the horse that I have happened to take a picture of that I'm using as a reference here, his name was Sam. And he was the sweetest thing. He was huge, but he was sweet. Um, and a lot, a lot of warm breads happened to be a little bit on the um, really sweet, gentle side. Uh, like Clydesdales are really, really cute. Really cool. Let's see. I think I'm going to do... I think I'm going to do the chestnut. I'm going to have all the colors out. And she was having a hard time getting him uh, confirmed for the breed and, because he was actually considered small for his breed. But he was, this, you could do anything to this horse pretty much. Uh, you know, he could have, he was one of those that kids could climb all, all over his legs and stuff. And he was a stallion. He was a stallion. Blew my mind. But she would go and... Uh, get him all primped up before the showing and had this lady come out and do massage work on his, uh, on his body and also rub, uh, essential oils on him. I mean, he was getting a major work over and it was pretty cool. All right. I just picked up a brush. What did I do with it? I cannot believe this. Okay. Plan B. Next brush. You guys do that? You pick up something and you lose it immediately? Oy. All right, I'm just getting some colors on for now. And then I'll work with it like I usually do. Kind of like block in colors. And then start working with shading and such after that. So have you ever seen a buckskin paint before? They are really interesting, very unusual coloring. And it's almost sometimes uh, hard to see the spots on them because uh, some buckskins can get really light in color. We had at one point, we had a buckskin paint and we had a chestnut paint. And the chestnut was a sketch and our Buckskin was named Scout, and uh, he was a working horse. He was basically came to us and retired. We needed a companion horse for Sketch because he was one of those kind of horses that uh, if you didn't have a companion horse for him, 
he would go find him one. He would break out and go find another horse to hang out with. So we knew that ahead of time. I was reading what Julie said about her having a Morgan and being super sweet with her mama and mama having a hard time riding and stuff. I I know exactly what you mean as far as uh, a babysitter kind of horse. They are rare and always a treasure if you get a hold of one of those that are very patient and sweet and they know when you can't ride very well to stay put. But the ones who can ride... They know they can push their limits on, or at least that's how Sketch was, uh, as far as babysitting goes. He was a comp I had a friend of mine who could ride really well. I mean, she blew me away with her riding, and whenever she rode Sketch, he would just basically he would annoy her, and it was funny because I, I mean she just never liked him. And one time she had a niece visiting. And she's like, can I borrow a sketch so she can have somebody to ride? And I was like, sure, go right ahead. I trust you. And so she had him out in the field and she was telling, or not in the field, in an arena. And she's like, okay, whatever I ever said about sketch, I take it back. I'm like, yeah, why is that? She goes, well, my niece was riding him. She's like, she wanted to ride him in a canter and get him going up to speed. And she had the hardest time doing it. I kept co uh, coaching her into doing it. And then I finally stopped because I was busy doing my own thing. So I stopped and I was watching her. And as soon as she he got up to speed, she got all bouncy and uh, was all wiggly like she was going to fall off. So he would naturally slow down and so that she didn't fall off. And she said, she said he did it every time. So anytime she got wiggly, she, he would slow down. So my nieces and nephews used to play underneath him too. He was cool camper. Focusing on the line, you can tell I get quiet. Oop, I didn't mean to paint. Oh, I cried. I didn't mean to paint that area and I got carried away. That was supposed to be one of the white spots. the brush maybe so I have an abundance of silly stories about my horses that like just anybody would have about cats and dogs so let's see when we first moved into our house out in the country um, we had a fence that was around the house and we also had a fence that was around the property so that way the you know the people had their own fence and then the horses had their own fence so they wouldn't get on the road and it worked out pretty good but uh one day i you know the, the grass was getting long and sketch and scout needed a bath really badly and i thought you know why not let's bring them in and my sister was visiting, so we kind of had like a little party where we were all like, you know, bathing the horses and uh, in inside the, the, the area, the people area. And 
after I was done with Sketch, I decided I'm just gonna let him loose and let him start grazing on the grass. Uh, and then we got busy with us. I turned around after we were, I guess, busy for about 10, 15 minutes, and I noticed Sketch was on the porch. So our house is on pier, was on pier and beam. In other words, it's up on cinder blocks and up in the air. So it wasn't exactly built for a horse, you know, weight kind of thing. And well, that ended us washing the horses in the house area because <laughs> Sketch would go immediately up there. Julie, he would give him che chewing tobacco and the horse liked the chewing tobacco? Are you kidding me? That is something I hadn't heard of. I'm not saying it's not possible. <laughs> so what was the weirdest thing your horse would eat besides chewing tobacco? Um, I think Sketch, his, his thing was uh, he loved barbecue potato chips uh, and then ice cubes. I would crush up ice cubes and give him his medicine with ice cubes and stuff. So you had like a little treat with that. I think that'll work. Yeah. thinking I'm going to do the main two and then darken it up in bits and just build up the color I think in the hair yeah definitely Your horse got drunk? Is that what you're trying to say? I was looking at the chat for Sue. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this done in one day. We will try. Let's start working on some color, building it up. That's funny. I know Rhonda's horses like um, going for it. And I've seen this. It's hysterical. It's going to look like a hot mess. We're in the ugly stage right now, guys. I had to break it to you.
Oh no, are you guys having buffering issues? Crud. I know I was having some issues with um, AT the other day, uh, yesterday, and um, and then they t did the takeover of the live for Rhonda, and so I, I got it a second time too. So I hope that's not the case. Um, if it happens a lot, just refresh your screen. And that, that will definitely um, help. So, uh, one of my favorite stories about Frodo, I don't think I've mentioned this before, I hope I haven't. Uh, we had a, a water main that was right by the front gate and they had to come and work on it. And I showed up in the, and I had my van at the time. Uh, and it was right, you know, right there when you walk in or, or drive in. And I noticed there's this huge hole. They've got this ditch digger there. And, and it's shoulder to shoulder guys. And then in the middle of these guys, you know, they have the ditch digger, like looking in towards the, uh, the hole. And then... So it's like, okay, this this hole right here, and it's like guy, 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 ditch digger, guy, 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 and shoulder, uh, and Frodo was in there, and guy, guy, and they're all like staring into the hole, and I'm like, okay, this is interesting, and it's like, I wish, I didn't have a smartphone at the time that, that tells you how far back it, it went, uh, and so I pulled up, I parked, and just walked up to it, and I'm like, so, how's it going? And they're like, okay, we're just trying to figure out the next move. I'm like, all right, so how's he been? Because I notice he's keeping you company. I'm like, oh, he's been fine. I'm like, cool. What's he stolen? <laughs> uh, oh, and they all start cracking up. Yeah, he tried to take off with the uh, the shovels and or a shovel, uh, but ended up just carrying it around for a while. I was like, okay, so he's not being too much of a problem. He got, and they all start cracking up. They're like, no, no, no. I'm like, okay, because I could put him in the back. Like, nope, that's fine. We're good. I was like, okay. So I left him there, and he ended up hanging out with him for the, the rest of the time while they were there. And it was just just one of those funny moments. He was a horse that would uh, definitely keep you company. Yeah, I think I'm going to give him a, a tricolored look. And tricolors, like sometimes you'll see paints and they have brown, black, and white. And it's really cool because a lot of times it makes the white areas just really stand out. He was supervising, yeah, right? So we had <laughs> another time. Okay, I had tons of stories of these guys. It's just, they're like overgrown puppy dogs. Or at least Frodo was for sure. All right, so our house, put it this way, and then the fence line was here, and then they had the entire pasture. Well, we had the roof changed out, and so the guys who were coming to do the, tr uh, the roofing repair lined up their trucks on the outside of the fence. And then they had this big old trailer coming in that was in the gate entry area going to the house. And that's where they pulled out all the metal sheets and stuff that they were going to install onto the house. Well, the horses were right by their, their trucks. And so I informed the guys, hey, this is another group of guys. Um, do you guys have anything in the back of your trucks? And they're like, no, 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 nothing that they can hurt. I'm like, okay, because they can get, get into it, especially one in particular. I like, no, it's just a cooler, and he can't open that up. Five minutes later, he's playing with a couple water bottles. He told it, it had one of those uh, combination, you know, you turn this way, you turn that way, and then you can get the, you know, the cooler opened up. So, yeah, he figured it out. It was funny.
I'm not far away from getting a finer brush here. Making some progress. I'm holding the tripod as I walk around it so I don't, if I do bump into it, it's not so terrible. So back onto these Frisians that I was talking about. So they're the big uh, knightly horses, and you see them a lot in movies. Uh, and the reason for that is, one, they make a big impression when they come on. And two, they're very easy to train. They're incredibly smart and very long. Um, and so that's why you see them a lot with the movies. Well, I fell in love with them from a movie, thank you very much. <laughs> and I always wanted one. Well, unfortunately at the time when I started looking into these things, these guys, they were like, you know, easy $50,000 each, you know, just starting out. And that was like 20 years ago, you know? <laughs> so they are, they're, they're, they're probably a real good. Um, and I wanted, I wanted one so bad. It was not even funny. Could not seem to talk my husband into it for some reason. I don't know why. But what I did up with, which was interesting, is my sister moved in with us. And she fell in love with a different breed. And they were called Dale Ponies, which were actually like miniature versions of Frisians. Uh, and they were, they're an English breed. And they're meant to pull mine carts. So they have the drafty nature of them to bring in the strength. But they're also jet black and had the feathers too. Uh, so when she moved in, she was like, oh, by the way, I've got some horses coming. You got what? <laughs> but my sister did that all the time. Uh, I was like, okay. And it's like, oh, by the way, there's a stallion coming too. I was like, what? You've got a stallion coming? Um... We don't have any kind of stallion fencing, um, panic, made some stallion fencing in a hurry kind of thing. Uh, come to find out he was like six months old. I was like, oh, that kind of stallion. You didn't tell us he was six months old. She goes, well, I didn't know. I didn't ask. I was like, okay. So she basically had two horses coming. Um, and one of them was a, a, a half breed of Dale Pony and Quarter Horse. And she really wanted this breed so bad that she was like okay I'll, I'll i'll take him uh but was kind of disappointed with it and then when she found out that uh they had a full breed uh del pony out she grabbed that one in a hurry and then proceeded to say hey you know i owe you a lot of money um um, um will you take him instead kind of thing um and of course they said yes knowing i'm not going to get the money back uh and that's how i ended up with frodo well, come to find out that the quarter horse in him brought out the drafty nature. In other words, he got big. And so he was just like a Frisian as far as the build and everything. And even his nature, he was super, super sweet. Uh, very smart. Probably the smartest horse I've ever had. I could teach him all kinds of stuff. And... Um, yeah, we bonded really quick. It didn't take long. So he was real interesting. It had the feathers and the long mane and stuff, which was great with our sticker burr bushes. <laughs> I don't know if I want to talk about them. Yeah, Lady Hawk. Yeah, that's that's the one that did it for me. Mm -hmm. Dog on Lady Hawk. Love that movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
All right, let's start getting this darker. So I guess you could say I ended up with my, my very own little Frisian. He was a, a bay Frisian, but he was a cutie pie. But the thing is, is when he got out in the field with other horses, you could see the, the pony in him come out. He turned into a complete turd ball with them. Because that's what ponies will do. They go, oh yeah, I'm going to rule this whole area. <laughs> you can't tell them otherwise. And he would do that. But with us, he was he was sweet as he can be. I got pictures of the kids playing in a big hay round, um, and they were making uh, tunnels through it. And he hung out with them like almost the entire afternoon. And it didn't matter if they were buried in these hay rounds or not; he was just hanging out. And he was only four at the time, which was pretty amazing. Oh, Andalusians are gorgeous. Definitely. All right, I'm going to bring you guys in for a close-up just for a moment. Let's see if I can do this slowly. That magnet grabs quick. So you can see I'm kind of painting kind of sloppy-like. But remember those little shiny, the, the real clear ones? Those will pull up and show canvas, and it'll be white underneath it. So we're getting there. I don't know if you guys can see. Let me see if I can catch it at an angle. Mm, I was trying to see if I could show the shimmer in this yellow. It's picking up a little bit there. But you definitely see the contrast of the shimmer between the brown there. Now it's for my camera since I have an iPhone. It's got that magnet on there. And so I found a, a, a magnet mount for my tripod which is great for when I go and I take detail shots and I can put it back in position like super easy. Oh, don't try to extend it. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was trying to get it to color a little bit. And it looks like it stained it. Crud. All right, let's see what we can do here. I sound drunk. Oh no. Yeah, that definitely sounds like some audio issues there. Do I sound bad to the rest of you guys? Let me know.
Like I'm playing in the mud. Sounds fine here. I'm good there too. Okay. Well, sorry, Sue. I'll try to cut back on the alcohol. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> you know, most of the time when I go tink tink back with uh, Erica on the lives, <laughs> most of the time I got a soda in my hand. to be a bright white on the whoops also don't want it to be green either okay I will recommend this much if you're using the masking fluid make sure you got it all painted and that way there's none of it that's like where it looks like it's white because you never know if you've gotten that area or not and then that way you're just it's kind of like a little bit of insurance there before you peel it up i've just got a little bit of alcohol in my brush and i'm just kind of rubbing things around Just making sure. Anything that overflowed, kind of blending it in, it'll disappear usually. It makes it look like it's supposed to be there all along. What's in the soda? <laughs> Ice. <laughs> Yeah, I'm all talking no show with the whole, you know, having a margarita and then never get a margarita. Especially on lives. I have a tendency to be a little bit on the uber careful on the live for some unknown reason. Thank you, Artist Haven. <laughs> A little bit more there okay that looks a little bit better hmm let's see now I want this to be a light bone color here with some hints of gold and then build it up so I'm gonna put a little bit of the brown that I'm using and then I'm also going to pick up some of that green that's already overflowed, and that way it'll look like it's supposed to be there. I think it's got a little reflection. Just work with what you got. I'll bring a little bit of green down here, too. All right, let's see. Nope, I'm not using that brush. In fact, I'm gonna get another cut. No, I didn't wipe out. I thought about it. So that's some of the gold interference. And I'm gonna walk around. Oh, did I put too much? Please tell me I didn't put too much.
That's looking pretty good there. Okay, I'm happy with that. Answered a couple words <laughs> and on my feet. <laughs> oh well. I still have some in the cup here, so I'm going to work with it. All I'm doing is tapping the outside just so it can blend a little bit more instead of having a weird hard edge. I'm already liking the shimmer. All right. Now, let's see. Think, Claire, think. Just dabbing it with a little bit of color so I can start working with some shadows. I went down a rabbit's hole last night looking at different pictures of unicorns. <laughs> I was like, well, how can I make them? I mean, do I make it with a little dainty horn? Do I make them with a big old long thing? You know, I saw one that looked like a rhino horn. I was like, mm, it's a little too much. So I thought at least the spiral I could have some fun with, maybe some gold in there. So that's where I was going with that. All right, sorry I'm not looking at the chat right now. I am definitely pointing down with my concentration. I remember once a long time ago where somebody was actually trying to breed for a unicorn and ended up with a kind of a, a goat like, but it was bright white. I remember that much. But they, uh, they said that they believed with medieval times that the unicorn started as a goat. And they went from there. Just adding a little bit and building, building it as I go and just dabbing it on. But it's going to keep that shimmer from the gold interference, which is going to be really cool.
Would I ever try a bighorn ram? Hmm. I guess anything's possible. <laughs> I could be persuaded. I do like drawing animals a lot better than I like drawing people. Do you guys remember the um, the mermaid that I did for uh, Erica? Because you know she's always talked about herself as always being a mermaid and stuff. I'm like, alright, well let's make you a mermaid and I wanted to do a collab with her so bad. And I was kind of a little bit starstruck and all that. And, um, but I just jumped in and said, Hey, let's do a collab together. And I, I had, I have an idea and I took Jeff's picture that she, um, where she was in a bathing suit and it was like, it led it to the perfect picture of her having a tail kind of thing. Um, and, and she's like, well, what are you going to do? I'm like, well, I'll do the first part and then We'll do the second part together or, or you do the second part and just do whatever you want to it. And I remember when I dropped off the piece that she put it off to the side. Like it was in a place where you could see it. So it wasn't like she was hiding it. And then I came back the next time for, I think it was a fire sale or something like that to help her out. And I'm like, so you want to do something with it? She's like, I don't know why. It just sits there mocking me. She goes, I'm afraid to touch it. It looks so good. And it did. I, I have to admit, it did my heart good, you know, because I always looked up to them, and especially Jeff, because he has has always been an artist, you know, you know, for a profession, and I wanted to do that. Life didn't present itself that way to me, but I always wanted to do that, um, and so I was getting back into it again, and it just made my heart feel really good. It's like, okay, I know I chose right. I think I've got a lot more to go on this guy but I think he's at a good stopping place because I definitely want to put some thought into it about doing something more to this thing obviously I got to work on some eyes and some shading to bring him out a little bit more and I want to make the unicorn or the horn itself a little bit more See how it's getting that light reflection there from the interference? Oh, wow. There you go. You can see it right there. Wah! It's like it glows. <laughs> Even the green and yellow in the background when I shift on it, it glows. So, yeah, we'll do some more on this uh, next Tuesday and the Wednesday following it. I'm going to be in Seguin. Because uh, Rhonda's got another pro class. So I'm going up there to help out for a few days on that. So I'm going to have one live next week. We might do Monday too. I don't know. Um, but I'll see if I can put a post out if I decide to do Monday as well. But I won't, I won't touch this until Tuesday. So that much I'll guarantee you. So I'm going to wrap this guy up for today. I kind of like him. Yep, yep, yep. He's growing on me. Definitely growing on me. And I like the green. Let me get the background out of the way. Ooh. <laughs> All right, guys. So, check out the website, clairelawrence.com. And get on the email list. And hopefully Mikey's got that email list set up. And I'll start putting together some emails for some new things I'm working on. As well as any kind of feature videos coming out. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Let's see who has shown up that I definitely say hello to Julie and Janice and, and Sue. There's some other people hiding in the background. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me all this time. I really appreciate it. Love you guys. And check out um, the Artist Haven tonight at 7 o'clock Central. Uh, that's Tish Winner's uh, site. 
and where we get to do art and hang out and chat. And if you're interested in tagging in and joining us uh, for the next time, you can hang out with us. So, later, y'all. Right, I'll turn off this thing.